Welcome to Hill Country Homilies, weekly homilies from St. Andrew Orthodox Church in Liberty Hill, Texas. St. Andrew's is an old calendar Orthodox church, sharing the faith of the apostles and the love of Christ with all who seek His truth. Now, let's listen to this week's homily. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Today we celebrate the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, a minor feast of the church, as it were, not one of the great feasts, uh, but an important feast, nonetheless. It marks the end of the Apostles' Fast, our, our post Paschal fast, and it commemorates the two greatest amongst the Apostles, the foremost evangelists of the church, Peter, the first among the Apostles, and Paul, he that evangelized the faith unto the Gentile nations. And these two are esteemed highly amongst the Apostles, but much as we understand the episcopacy uh, of the church, which derives directly from the secession of the apostles, we understand that the primacy of these two, Peter as the leader of the 12 and Paul as the great evangelist, the primacy of Peter and Paul amongst the apostles was not one of power, it was not one of rule, but it was one of leadership. Peter, the chief of the apostles, was with Jesus when Jesus says, he that will be first shall be last. And he that would be chief would be servant of all. That's not understanding leadership as power. It's understanding leadership as service. And we see in this particular gospel reading today that Peter makes his confession of faith. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Christ accepts that confession and says that upon that confession of faith, not upon Peter, but upon the confession that Peter made, the church will be built. And that only makes sense because a church built upon a man is bound to fail. Because man is broken, fallible, and corrupt. But the confession of that man, that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, has come in the flesh, is a confession that the greatest of the demons cannot contend against. Peter and Paul led the apostles. Peter, as the leader of the twelve, Paul, as the great evangelist. But yet we see when there is a disagreement among them, they come together in council and resolve it. See that in Acts 15, the Council of Jerusalem, where it's decided, and this relates directly to Paul's evangelism, where it's decided that the burdens to be placed upon the Gentiles when entering the church are not the same requirements of becoming a Jew. In other words, if a Gentile is into the church, they don't need to first become Jewish and adhere to the Jewish law. Instead, the apostles gather and say there are these strict, limited things that we will place upon them, but we will do nothing more to hinder them from coming into the church. And when they meet in this council, it's not Peter that's in charge. It's not Paul that's in charge. It's James, the bishop of Jerusalem. They were meeting in Jerusalem, so it is fitting that the bishop of that city would preside in that council. The biblical interaction of the apostles gives us the understanding of how the bishops of the church relate one to another. 
a bishop who's enthroned in his diocese is the ruler of that diocese, but he's not the ruler of any other bishop's diocese. It makes sense, it only makes sense that when we look at these men, Peter and Paul, we look at their roles of leadership, it only makes sense that we would not entrust to them rule over the other apostles and rule over the other bishops because both of them exemplify the failures of man. That may seem like a harsh thing to say about these blessed saints that we hold in the highest of esteem. This may seem terrible to say to to Peter, who's been given the keys to the kingdom, who, like all the apostles, what he binds on earth is bound in heaven, what he looses on earth will be loose in heaven. Be clear, that was given to all the apostles, not just to Peter to say that he exemplifies all the failures of man. But Peter shows the greatest of the failures when at the time of Christ's suffering and his trial for Cephas, Peter does what? He denies Christ, not once, not twice, Three times. Three chances to get it right. And Peter gets it wrong. Each and every time. And even when Christ returns to restore Peter, which we actually sang about in the Vespers last night, when Christ asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? Agape, love. Peter says, oh, I like you, using a different Greek word for love than what Christ offered to him. And yet Christ, because of his great condescension to the weakness of man, restores Peter to his place of leadership amongst the apostles, and he tells him, feed my sheep. But he doesn't tell him, take charge over the other apostles, because we should never entrust such power to men who are so capable of failure. Paul, who was a diligent servant of God, spreading the church across and west across Africa and into Europe until the time of his death, was also a great persecutor of the church before he came to know Christ as the true God. Everything that you can do in rejecting Christ, Paul did. And he persecuted and murdered those that would confess the true faith until the scales were lifted off his eyes and it became clear to him. These leaders who we celebrate are like each of us fallen and broken men. But like each of us who have come into the church, we have restoration in Christ. We have healing through the mysteries of Christ that have been given to the church. So when we celebrate Saints Peter and Paul, we celebrate their life, we celebrate their example, we celebrate their holiness, their evangelism, their faith, even to their death at the hands of the godless authorities of Rome. But we should see in them also ourselves. As we failed, they failed. As we doubt, they doubted. As we resist, sometimes the call of Christ, they resisted. But yet, They found their way to the heavenly kingdom through faith in Christ Jesus. May we find the same. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Christ. Thanks for listening to Hill Country Homilies. 
For more information, visit St. Andrew Orthodox Church at www.st-andrew.church. And please join us again next week.